All right, so Paul, we've looked at so far two potential options of energy. The sun started hot and cooled down, and that gave us not a lot. That gave us a lot more than chemical energy, combustion. So what's the next option? Well, there's another source of energy you don't often think of, which is gravity. Yeah, I mean, let's say I drop something on your foot. That's going to hurt. It's going to do work. Now, on Earth, we use gravity as an energy source occasionally, mostly of hydroelectric. Ah, you have water yep. that's high up, and you let it flow down, and it liberates its potential energy. Yep. Something we've uh, talked about elsewhere in the, in the That's course. right. And we said we warned people it'd come up a few times. Yes. So this is a close-up of the potential energy curve of the sun. So This is telling you how much energy a kilogram has, depending on where it is. That's right. So if it's way up here compared to getting to the surface of the sun, that's the potential energy difference. So basically, if you take something that's a long way away from the sun and move it to the sun's surface, you liberate a lot of potential energy, about 2 by 10 to the 11 joules for dropping one kilogram into the sun. So instead of you just dropping a rock on my foot and releasing a little bit of energy, if you drop a rock onto into the, the sun, sun you're, that's, that's a huge amount. Of it's going to be going very fast by the time it hits the sun's <laughs> surface. I mean, we know if you drop a rock on Earth, it's called like a meteorite, and that yep. causes big explosions. But the sun's gravity is way more than the Earth's gravity. So you drop something onto the sun, it's going to liberate a huge amount of energy. Well, that's a good point, right? So we know meteorites, and as we talked about in planets, meteorites hit the Earth, they hit the moon, we hit Mars, we see them, lots of energy. Can't we just throw meteorites at this thing? Well, this indeed was the conventional wisdom in the middle of the 19th century, that the sun was powered by meteorites falling on it. Lots of meteorites. How many? So we've seen you get this much energy for dropping one kilogram yep. into the sun. Now, that's the amount of energy it puts out per second. That's so right. if you take this and divide it by that, it tells you how many kilograms you have to drop in per second, which is about 10 to to 15, one followed by 15 zeros. So we're getting into the quintillion <laughs> worth of uh, numbers here. That seems like a lot. But then uh, a, a meteorite that's a meter in diameter yep. weighs a ton, so about a thousand kilograms. Yep. So a few thousand meter diameter um, would do it. Plausible? Yeah, I mean, you probably wouldn't see them. I mean, yeah. a few thousand things a meter in size in the face of the huge disk of the sun, you're that's not going to pick up. I mean, we barely even see them as they skim near the Earth sometimes. That's right. So this is actually is quite possible. This is far more than hit the Earth. Yep. I mean, if we had several tens of thousands of meteorites that size hitting the Earth, we'd notice. But the sun has more potential energy, more likely to fall than there compared to the Earth. But the real problem here is this would make the sun get heavier and heavier and heavier. So we can ask how long would it take to double yeah. the mass of the sun. So we can say at this rate per second, how many seconds would it take to add another 10 to the 30 kilograms? Yep. And that's about 10 to 15 seconds, which we can convert it, is about 30 million years. So what you're saying is every 30 million years, the sun doubles in size. Because of all the meteorites that had to land on it to give it enough power to keep it shining at the rate we can currently see. So the sun would then have to be much bigger. The sun will be bigger now and yep. smaller in the past. That's right. And it's going to be bigger in the future. So the sun is just going to keep growing and growing and growing. So it means the sun wouldn't have been there 30 million years in the past. And maybe it's just been built up entirely by adding meteorites over the last 30 million years. A meteorite's only got heavy elements. That's right. So you can't really have hydrogen in a meteorite. Mm. So that means, given everything else is only 1% of the sun, maybe it's only 1% of 30 million years. So that just doesn't seem like Maybe you could have some hydrogen meteorites frozen. I don't know, yeah, I don't know. Like I mean, maybe, this, but one of the... There's another, another yeah. problem, which is this will affect the orbit because yeah. the sun's getting heavier. So we know that the Earth is going in a nice circular orbit around the sun. Here's a yellow ball going in a circular orbit around a blue ball. But now what happens if I make the blue ball get steadily heavier? So we're throwing meteorites at it now? Yes. So I'm throwing meteorites. You can't see the meteorites, but it's getting heavier and heavier. And what's happening to the orbit here? So it's starting to change, right? It's getting closer and closer. So it's no longer up here in this nice stable orbit, it's getting closer to the sun. Yeah, so what's happening now is the, the Earth would be getting constantly close to the sun as the sun gets heavier. So if you look back in time, the sun would have been much smaller, say, a million years in the yep. past, and it's been getting heavier and heavier and heavier, and we're getting closer and closer. So the Earth should have been very cold in the past, yep. and getting warmer and warmer and warmer, and in the not too far distant future, maybe a million years in the future, we'll be sucked right into the middle of it. But don't we kind of know that probably wasn't <coughs> the case, that it wasn't that much colder in the past? Yeah, so these are both problems. We 
meteorites don't have the right elements. Yep. Back in the 19th century, they thought the Earth and uh, the Sun was made of the same stuff as the Earth, mostly rock, but now we know it's mostly hydrogen. You don't get hydrogen meteorites. Nope. Hydrogen will just escape from a meteorite. So I suppose you can get water, which is a bit of it in, but. Yeah. Um, so that's not going to work, but there's another possibility, which is that instead of throwing meteorites into the Sun, you actually just let the Sun shrink. So you're kind of making it smaller and shrinking and condensing it. Yeah, so the idea is that rather than throw meteorites from here into the sun, you, the sun originally was much bigger than it is, yep. and the outer layers of the sun have moved in. So as you throw more in, it shrinks. Well, no, you're not, not throwing any meteorites in at all okay. now, so you're just letting, so instead of having meteorites come in, which has the trouble of making the sun more massive and changing our orbit, you just leave the sun at the same mass, but make it get smaller. Okay. So you say the sun originally was very big, which meant that most of the yeah. gas was out here somewhere. And you let it shrink, maybe as it's cooling down. And as it shrinks, the gas that was up here in a potential curve drops down to there, goes from here to here. And because it's falling closer to the core of the sun, it will liberate potential energy. Mm. So now so the potential energy is changing as we shrink the sun. And instead of now meteorites falling, then we're just letting the outer layers of the sun fall in. Okay. And because the outer layers are already there to begin with, that's not going to affect the orbit. That's right. And the outer layers probably had lots of hydrogen, so it solves the problem of not having the right elements. That's right. So by the late 19th century, this was a preferred idea. It seemed to make more sense than meteorites. It got rid of the making the orbit spiraling problem. It got rid of where does the hydrogen come from problem. So does this work? Well, it does work. Um, and uh, Lord Kelvin, who our temperature scale is named after, right. did the calculation. And it turned out that it will indeed work for about 10 million years. Same calculation we did for meteorites. Yep. Uh, if you move gas in from a long way out to near the middle, you can maybe for a few million years, maybe 10, maybe 20, maybe five, something like that. But ballpark a few million years. So it's still a lot longer than chemical energy, still a lot longer than the sun cooling down, and a little bit more plausible than a whole bunch of meteorites falling Yeah, I mean, 10 million years is longer than human history by a long time, longer than the existence of humans on Earth. So that's sounding a bit more plausible. Maybe this could work. Yeah.